Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. New this noon, police in Brownsville say the driver in a deadly crash that killed eight people has now been charged with manslaughter. During a news conference today, police said that they believe the driver, George Alvarez, lost control after running a red light yesterday morning. His Range Rover plowing into a crowd of Venezuelan migrants who were outside of a migrant center. The, sh the shelter's director, Victor Maldonado, said the SUV ran up the curb, flipped, and continued going for about 200 more feet. He says witnesses detained the driver as the driver tried to run away, holding him until police arrived. Alvarez now charged with eight counts of manslaughter, 10 counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Meantime, another massive shooting, this time at a North Texas outlet mall yesterday, and it's raising familiar and troubling questions. Eight people died in that rampage, and the man with the gun was not only a discharge veteran, but he had worked for at least three security companies and had undergone hours of firearms proficiency training in just recent years. All of this according to a database maintained by the Texas Department of Public Safety. ABC's Melissa Adon reports that the reason for Mauricio Garcia's discharge should also have raised a red flag. A Saturday at the mall changed forever when police say a lone gunman armed with an AR style rifle opened fire, hitting dozens of shoppers at the Allen Premium Outlet Mall. We got shots fired at the mall. Eight people were killed, seven injured. The area hospitals near Allen says the victims range in age from as young as five to 61. A military veteran whose son works at the mall says he responded within minutes, sharing with ABC's Matt Gutman a chilling account of what he witnessed as he called 911. I was on the operator, I was counting bodies, and I told her, I've got seven bodies, I need seven ambulances. And she's like, what? I don't know if we have that many. I said, however many you can get. Among those victims, Aishwara Takikwanda, an engineer, according to ABC's affiliate WFAA, and 20-year-old Christian LaCour, his sister tells ABC he was an on-duty security guard. The gunman identified by authorities as 33-year-old Mauricio Garcia. Investigators have searched his home in Dallas. Multiple ABC law enforcement sources say this is being investigated as possible domestic terrorism. This graphic video part of the investigation showing the horror that unfolded when the gunman stepped out of a car and began firing. An unnamed hero cop heard on police radio first calling for backup, then taking down the suspect alone. Authorities tell ABC News that in 2008, Garcia was discharged from the Army for mental health concerns. Investigators say they are poring over his social media history, finding racially motivated posts. They say he was wearing a patch with white supremacist insignia. This mass shooting marks the 199th one just this year, according to the Gun Violence Archive. Melissa Don, ABC News, Allen, Texas. And turning to the Capitol, time is running out for many of the nearly 200 gun bills before the Texas legislature. Families of those killed by gun violence shaming those responsible for not even voting these bills out of committee. Specifically targeted for passage, House Bill 2744, which if passed, it would raise the legal age to buy a semi-automatic rifle that is, quoting the bill, capable of accepting a detachable magazine and that has a caliber greater than 22, raising that age to 21 years old. However, today is the last day for that to happen. The family is angry, saying it's now clear that all of the promises made by the House Speaker and the Select Committee on Community Safety has not translated to action. They share their thoughts and prayers. Well, how about our thoughts and prayers to put the vote for HB 2744 up? But actions speak louder than words. If they cared, they would have immediately brought HB 2744 to a vote. Instead, here we are begging for a vote on the last day to make it happen. Many of the Uvalde family speakers at today's news conference were in tears saying just weeks before the first anniversary, the lack of action is shameful. Meanwhile, Title 42 set to end this week. The COVID era policy stemmed the flow of migrants coming into the U.S. who were asylum seekers. Well, after it expires, there are concerns for a huge jump in border crossings. In fact, crowds already forming in Mexico to come over. During a news conference this morning, Governor Greg Abbott said the surge could be in the tens of thousands a day. 
According to the Biden administration itself, they anticipate about 13,000 people coming across the border illegally every single day. If you extend that out over the course of a year, it means there will be about 4,700,000 people coming across the border a year. That will mean that there will be more people coming across the border illegally than there are residents of the massive city of Chicago. Governor Abbott also mentioned a new National Guard unit he's deploying. It's called the Texas Tactical Border Force. He said right now the Texas National Guard is loading Black Hawk helicopters and C-130s to deploy, deploy rather specially trained National Guard members to hot spots all along the border to stop migrants from entering the U.S. illegally. All right, well, back here at home, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. It is already 85 degrees out. You see some clouds in the sky, but it's still nicer than how the day started, Ursula. I thought it started pretty good. I slept um, in. Oh, well, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Always makes it better. Always makes it better. Hey, uh, you wouldn't know it now, guys. You tell you it looks nice out the area, but we're headed into an active pattern. I think we're going to see rain chances most of this week, and there's some times where uh, kind of pointing out where we could see some heavy rain too uh, here over the next seven days. So let's take a look at some of the headlines here. And yes, we are moving into uh, an active pattern with rain chances almost every day. What about that heavy rain? Well, we think it's possible tonight and then probably again Friday into Saturday. It's really hard to pinpoint exactly where and when, but those are the general time frames we're looking at. It's still going to be hot. And today will be our hottest day throughout our seven day forecast. We're probably going to be up near 90. Heat indices will be in the upper 90s. We're already up to 85. Dew point 71. So very humid. West South Southeast really winds at 13, gusting to 22. There's a look at the cloud cover, and we saw most of that go away here in San Antonio, which is why temperatures are getting pretty warm. There are some high clouds to our south, some clouds trying to build there to the south and east of San Antonio. We're watching what's happening out west because storms that develop in Mexico could eventually make their way towards San Antonio a little bit later tonight. 85 right now in Kerrville, 86 New Braunfels, 84 in Kennedy. We're in the mid 80s here around San Antonio. And as you uh, look at the heat index, when you factor in the humidity, it feels like 90. Heat indices are already starting to jump up into the 90s. So yes, it will be a steamy day. As you plan out your day, here's what we're thinking. 89 at 3 o'clock, 90 at 4 p.m. We start to introduce some rain chances. And then as we get into tonight, those chances go up 40% chance at 8 o'clock. And by the time we get to midnight, 50% chance of thunderstorms. We'll watch for some heavy rain in spots. And as I said, there are more chances ahead. We'll take a look at that seven day forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. New at noon last week, a jury found a man guilty of murder, and this was only after about 30 minutes of deliberation. So today, the next step, they also quickly sentencing the man, Douglas Skaggs, sentencing him to 60 years behind bars. Skaggs was on trial for the murder of Tito Roman. Roman found shot and killed at a home suites motel in the 4900 block of Northwest Loop 410 back on March 17th of 2021. Testimony revealing that the two men were arguing over a vehicle that Roman had that Skaggs believed was his. Now, coming up later this afternoon, Eric Hernandez takes us inside the courtroom as Skaggs' attorney pleaded with the jury to only hand down a five-year sentence. A San Antonio resident says they were only protecting their property when they fired several shots into the air to scare off a group of teenagers. The teens allegedly breaking into trucks right in front of his north side home early this morning is happening in the 200 block of Fennel near Loop 410 near Vance Jackson. Sarah Costa there on the scene explaining how the teens did not go quietly or safely. Shell casings and broken glass. It's what was left behind for crime scene investigators to process this morning after residents shot off his gun to scare off teenagers from breaking into his truck. San Antonio police say the 40 year old who lives on Fennel saw a group of teenagers breaking into his truck in his driveway and another across the street around five this morning. Police say he went outside and fired his gun into the air to scare them off. The teenagers ran off, but after getting to the end of the block, a couple houses down, one of the teens fired back, shooting several rounds toward the resident. Crime scene investigators have marked off where they found those shell casings, where those teenagers allegedly fired back at the homeowner at the end of the block at Fennel and Panda. No one was hit or injured. After the teens ran off, police sent up their helicopter in the air to search for them. The teens involved were caught by police a couple of blocks away and were taken into custody. Police didn't release their ages, just that they are juveniles. 
Nothing was stolen out of the trucks that were broken into. SAPD says the homeowner will not face any charges. However, the teenagers will possibly face charges of burglary of vehicle and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police still looking for this 14 year old. His name is Jules Robinson. He is five foot six, 130 pounds. He has black hair, brown eyes. He was last seen wearing a paperboy hat, black thin framed glasses, a dark colored t-shirt, black Nike shorts and slip on shoes. He vanished around midnight on May 1st at the 900 block of Classen Pass. That's on the north side near Hebner Road. Law enforcement officials believe that uh, this child is in grave or immediate danger. If you have any information on this 14 year old, you can call the San Antonio Police Department with the number that is on your screen. It is 210-207-7660. All right, NBA playoffs in full force. We're used to fights between players on the court, but what about when an owner gets involved? We're going to explain what exactly happened in just a bit. Thousands of film and television writers putting down their pens and laptops and picking up picket signs. They are now demanding better pay as well as residuals from streaming media. So Tiffany Huerta speaking to one of those writers who grew up right here in San Antonio, explaining the situation and explaining the impact. I have had to go back to uh, my day job uh, in between gigs. Um, and so I'm, I'm working as an accountant in the meantime, as I wait to lock in that second uh, writing gig. Raymond Arturo Perez is one of the thousands of writers, Guild of America members, who have been picketing in Los Angeles. We want to be properly compensated for our work. Arturo Perez is a film and television writer who grew up in San Antonio. We met him in March when he was teaching UTSA students about screenwriting. He has worked on several projects and was a writer for season two of Selena, the series on Netflix. It's starting to feel like a, a gig to gig career path uh, in a way that um, in the past really hasn't been the case. Uh, you get hired on a show and you are able to be creative and be compensated for your creativity. And now it, it really is a struggle. The Writers Guild of America called for its members to stop working until the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers come to an agreement on different issues, from salary increases to residuals from streaming media. Well, we get residuals from, from network shows and from cable shows, so we're asking that we get residuals from streaming shows as well. The union represents over 11,000 writers, and we're already starting to see some shows affected, including Netflix's Stranger Things, that halted production due to the strike. I feel very empowered, the fact that we are on strike. I feel like our demands are logical and necessary for the future of of writing and 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 and, and this creative business. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. We want to look outside with live cam. Uh, yeah, it mug, it's muggy out there and it's it's been a bad hair day for for days now. <laughs> the good old hairometer. The hairometer <laughs> is <laughs> off the charts. The charts. Uh, yeah, the humidity is not going anywhere. Uh, we've been waiting, though, for that humidity to kind of turn into some good rain. We saw some heavy rain over the weekend, not necessarily here in San Antonio, but we have some more opportunities ahead. The aquifer is down half a foot, 638.8. In your pollen count, we have low counts of mold and grass. We'll take a look at our rain chances all this week. Coming up. Welcome back and happy Monday. So coming off the weekend, Ursula, did you make it outside? Did you enjoy the weekend? I enjoyed the weekend. My hair did not. Okay. It looks great for what it's worth. Well, <laughs> you know, this is a temporary fix. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of hairspray involved. Um, but I will say, I hope the weather does, all this humidity doesn't prevent certain people from doing their Mother's Day shopping. Oh. Reminder. Okay. Dang. Yeah. We hope your kids are watching. Subtle reminder. Uh, yeah, you know, it's a good <laughs> point. And we, we still have a week to go. Do you buy a gift for your wife? Yes. Yes. Nice. Oh, yes, of course. Nice. <laughs> Putting Justin on the spot. Can you talk yes. to my husband? <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll work on that. Uh, we still have a week left, okay? We still got a week to go. Uh, but you may have to dodge some raindrops if you are going to be out and about shopping. We've got uh, rain chances all this week now. It's not going to be raining the whole time, but we do have to watch for some uh, rain amounts that maybe uh, cause some flooding in spots. Uh, let me show you what's uh, what the rainfall has looked like across the state over the last several days. So this is since Thursday morning. And you can see that there's been a lot of rain from Abilene over to Dallas, a little bit of a kind of a hole over the hill country. And we've had some rain down here, not a lot around San Antonio, but as you get down to the south and east of town, there were some good amounts and south and west too. all areas that need rain. But uh, hopefully we'll get to these areas to fill in too with some rainfall uh, because it is going to be kind of spotty and uh, hit or miss type stuff going forward. So as we go outside for you right now, 85 and partly cloudy. Dew point is at 71. South southeasterly winds at about 13 miles per hour. And as we look at the forecast for today, when it comes to the temperature and heat index, we're forecasting a high right around 90. Heat index is going to be somewhere close to 95, 96. So the heat index is going to be problematic again later today. If you do have plans to be outside for long periods of time, it is going to be very, very steamy. Uh, we look at the cloud cover. There's not a lot of help there as far as shade. We've got some thin high clouds moving through. But uh, other than that, it is fairly sunny right now. Now we do notice there are some clouds trying to develop right there and then back out to the west. We'll see what these do. Sometimes these can kind of blossom into some showers and storms. But really, we're thinking the main action is going to be a little bit later this evening and tonight. And I'll show you the computer models here in just a second. As you look across the state, all of West Texas is sunny, but where we have a little bit more moisture, clouds starting to fill in. We've got some showers there, too. And on water vapor, there's a little bit of a spin right here. This is a low that I want to watch. This is going to work its way across our area tonight into tomorrow, and that should give, give lift to some rain. And the question will be kind of wh where does the heavy rain set up? Now, these computer models and these kind of uh, situations aren't great, so we're not going to pay too, too close attention to exactly where it develops rain, but we're going to get a general idea from it. So 20% this afternoon, but as we get into tonight, we start to see showers and storms erupt out west, and they're going to try to make a run for San Antonio tonight. Uh, this is around midnight, shows some showers and storms. We have a 50% chance of rain in the forecast. And then with this low around, we're still going to see some activity going into tomorrow. Uh, maybe some heavier rain setting up to the south and east of San Antonio tomorrow afternoon. But I think even here in town, we could still see some activity during the day tomorrow, some scattered showers and storms. There is a risk for uh, some stronger storms. Now, this is updated. so. We're going to take away isolated here and add scattered. You see this darker pink? The Storm Prediction Center just added us into a scattered risk out west, which makes sense with some of those stronger storms potentially coming in. So the main threats will be hail and gusty winds, and that would be, again, late this afternoon and tonight. We'll certainly keep you posted. And as we look at the rain chances this week, tonight and tomorrow morning, I think is a window where we could see some heavy rain, some higher rain chances, a little bit of a lull Wednesday, Thursday. That's not to say we still can't see some rain because there's a 30% chance. But the higher chances come back Friday and Saturday, and that's when we become concerned about some pockets of heavy rain once again. So a lot to look at there in the seven-day forecast. Uh, 90 today, that's probably our warmest day. And then with uh, added clouds and rain chances, we're in the 80s most of the week. Uh, again, with rain chances each and every day. So keep that case out weather app handy. We can't say that enough. And we'll keep you posted oh, if and when things pop up. Guys. Yeah, go between the showers to buy that Mother's Day gift for Sunday. There you go. Thank you, Justin. All right. The Sun's new owner and, well, you say it, a former MVP getting feisty courtside. We're going to explain what exactly happened and how the game ended. Plus, big football weekend here in San Antonio. The XFL Championship in the Alamo City. What to expect? That's next. SAFC acquiring a lot of new faces over the last few weeks, and head coach Alan Marcina said the extra day to prep really helps them acclimate to San Antonio's style of play. Take a look. Certainly showed off on the field. Fifth minute, Samuel and Iran getting some space in the box. Stops, bends one past the keeper inside the far post. A beautiful strike. Open up the score 1-0 SAFC. But Vegas responding, 19th minute. Oh, Andres Jimenez, perfect pass. Tabor pressed him behind SA's defense and Jordan Farr. Well, level at 1 1, same score. Here we go. 81st minute, Tani Oluwashe. 
turns, fires past the crossbar, game-winning goal in his SAFC debut. SAFC finally back in the win column, a 2-1-W. It was a tough game, you know, tough conditions with the pitch and the weather, but I think coming in we knew what we were going to face, we knew what the conditions were going to be like, so the preparation over the week really put us in the position to go out there and win the game, and that's exactly what we did. We had two great finishes, I think we were unfortunate not to get potentially two, three more um, in the back of that clear-cut chances, so we'll continue to build on this. All right, so San Antonio FC standing on the road, taking on Charleston Battery on their home turf Saturday, 6.30 p.m. SAFC not back to Toyota Field until, whew, we got a while, May 27th. All right, game three, Nuggets Suns. Check out what happened in the first half. Nikola Jokic and, yes, that's not a player. That's the Suns owner in the front row. Jokic trying to get the ball. The owner, Matt Ishbia, holding. Then Jokic shoves him a little with the, fire, or the forearm. And, oh, look at that. Suns owner flops back in his seat. We'll see if Joker gets any punishment for that one. But the game was close until the fourth. Landry Shamit on fire. Look at that. Shamit face, 19 points. 12 of those in the fourth quarter. Kevin Durant and Devin Booker each with 36. And they were the only starters for the Suns in double figures. The Joker, the former MVP, he had 53 points. He kept Denver in it. Now, it would cut the lead to three, but that's as close as it would get. The Suns tying up the series, 129 to 124. All right, so here's how the Western semis are looking. Suns and Nuggets tied at 2-2. Game five, Tuesday night at nine in Denver. The Lakers leading the Warriors 2-1. Game four, pretty sure it's tonight, nine o'clock in L.A. All right, this is my game of the weekend. We got Celtics, we got Sixers, fourth quarter, Boston up one. Oh. Once down 16, they would go up by four with a Marcus Smart three. He had 21, 20 seconds left. Celtics by two. James Harden, oh, James Harden was really doing it all. Beautiful floater going to OT, tied at 107 in OT. Celtics by two again, 20 seconds left. James Harden in the corner. We haven't seen him perform this well in the playoffs before. And three seconds to go. Boston getting a last second chance. Here we go. Marcus Smart is late. It is good, but it doesn't count. Hand in the face, buzzer went off. Philly wins. This Series tied two apiece. Harden had 42, six three-pointers. Philly only had 11 bench points. So what comes next? Here we go in the East. Heat taking on the Knicks. They are leading two to one. Game four, 6.30 in Miami. Philly and Boston tied two all. Game five tomorrow night, 6.30, back to Boston. And here we go, busy weekend in San Antonio. XFL championship, no, San Antonio is not playing in it. We are hosting it. Arlington Renegades taking on the D.C. Defenders. Game set 7 p.m. at the Dome on Saturday. If you're interested in going, we have all the information. Just head to KSAT.com. You can get tickets, Ursula, as low as $25. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, great way to spend Mother's Day. Hand in the face. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. We're doing what we can here. All ad-libbed. Yeah. I might add. We like to have fun. Speaking of ad-libbing. Hey, what are they cooking up over there? Oh. Mm. I might stay late today just to, to get yeah. some of these leftovers. We could run over to Market Square for that. Oh, that looks delicious. I think that looks like something you would make for Mother's Day brunch. Oh, we got a croissant in the background, too. We got oh, a thumbs up. Right. Thank you, Ted. A confrontation with migrants and those trying to keep an orderly border about to come to a head. The end of the pandemic era, Title 42 policy, a possible flood of already migrants already massing at the border in order to cross. ABC's Matt Rivers shows us the scene where the asylum seekers are hoping the new era gives them passage once again. Another brutal day ahead at the U.S. border. Hundreds of migrants stuck, waiting, hoping to get into the U.S. So this is the U.S.-Mexico border. People crossing here every single hour, going up that hill, over the barbed wire, and they can't go any further. U.S. authorities making them wait there, sometimes for days. Their wait continues in what will be a monumental week for U.S. immigration. On Thursday, Title 42 ends the Trump-era health policy that allows authorities to immediately deport most migrants. When it ends, tens of thousands currently waiting in Mexico can apply for asylum. Authorities say they're preparing for a spike in migrant crossings, upwards of 10,000 per day. In response, the administration opening additional facilities to process migrants, adding immigration officers, 
force even sending 1,500 active duty troops to help bolster the response. We've been preparing for quite some time and we are ready. No one knows for sure by how much or even if migrant crossings will jump after Thursday. Some, though, not waiting to cross. ¿Qué quieres hacer en el otro lado? What do you want to do on the other side? You want to study? Now, under Title 42, most migrants were quickly deported here to Mexico without facing any legal consequences. But when that policy ends on Thursday, that will change. Migrants who cross illegally could face much stiffer penalties. That's why so many of the migrants that are just across the border there behind me had chosen to cross now. So much uncertainty right now here at the border. Matt Rivers, ABC News in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. Well, the Biden administration working to help airline passengers. President Biden set to announce a new proposal that would require airlines to compensate customers for canceled or even delayed flights. A White House official says that this new rule means airlines will fit, fit, foot the bill for controllable cancellations or delays. That includes giving passengers money for meals, hotels, and even rebooking in certain circumstances. Now, the proposal would establish what constitutes a controllable delay or cancellations. Mandates like this already exist in countries like Canada and many countries in the European Union. Check your bunk beds. Walker Edition Furniture Company issuing a voluntary recall of more than 120,000 tw twin bunk beds. It's all due to fall and impact hazards. The company saying that the wooden slats that support the beds can break. The roughly 121,000 twin over twin bunk beds were sold online through Amazon, Walmart, Home Depot, and other retailers. Walker Edison said it got reports of 14 incidents of those slats breaking. There was one minor report of injuries. The beds were sold between February 2010 and February 2022. Well, more than 600,000 federal student loan borrowers from the public sector, they've actually gotten their debts forgiven since October of 2021. The program promises to wipe away remaining federal student loan debt after an eligible government or nonprofit worker, such as a teacher or police officer, makes 10 years of monthly payments. Another 6,000 borrowers in the program will see their loans discharged soon. Separately, the administration's one-time student loan forgiveness program still held up in the courts after several Republican-led states sued. They argued that the executive branch doesn't have this power to implement the proposed debt relief. Meanwhile, payments pause for most federal student loans due to the pandemic. They're expected to pick back up later this year. Let's take a live look outside with live cam. Enjoy the sun sign when you can get it this week. This week is going to be a lot of different kinds of weather hitting us. Just depends on where you are and when you are. Exactly. It's, it's a very good point. It's kind of random distribution of rain, but we think as we get into tonight, though, it'll sort of concentrate perhaps over our area and we may get some heavier rain in spots. Uh, I want to take you back outside. Today is going to be our warmest day in our seven day forecast. So if you're outside and sweating, well, hopefully we'll cool it down a little bit. It'll be in the 80s the rest of the week, but I think tonight uh, today will be in the 90s uh, for highs and you can see the partly cloudy skies we have right now 85. Dew point is at 71 with south southeasterly winds at about 13 miles per hour. Uh, temperatures across the country, it's pretty cool out to the west. You got 50s in places like Seattle and Portland where it's in the mid 50s, but we're baking here in Texas and that warmth stretching north now all the way into parts of Nebraska and Iowa and some warm temperatures too for the uh, Gulf states. Uh, 85 here in San Antonio, 86 Del Rio, mid 80s, basically just about anywhere you go here in the state of Texas and it is very, very humid. Forecast for the day, partly cloudy. The first half of the day is quiet, but as we head into the afternoon and evening hours, we bring rain chances up 40% at 8 o'clock. An even better chance as we get into the overnight hours, we'll be watching storms that could potentially form in Mexico and move in our direction. We're going to take a look at that forecast, time it out a little bit better for you, and talk about what you can expect the rest of the week coming up in just a bit. Guys. Well, it's the second week of May and we still have those road closures that could lead to delays. So we always want you to know before you go and we're going to start with what's happening here along 281 on the north side of San Antonio. We all know there is plenty of work that takes place out there, but this asphalt work will continue to uh, probably cause some issues for you if you don't plan ahead. So make sure to know that Monday, May 8th up until Sunday, May 14th, we will see that work take place between 9 a.m. to 3 in the afternoon, alternating lane closures on the frontage roads, though this time in both directions at Bolverde Road. All right, let's take another jump 
up onto Tuesday, I-10 in Kendall County. We have painting work, and we again all know I-10 is one of those areas where we tend to see a lot of that work take place, and sometimes it leads to big slowdowns. This may cause some slowdowns for you if you travel through there between Tuesday, May 9th, all the way up until Wednesday, May 10th. The work starts again at 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. We'll see the a closure of the eastbound ramp to US 87. All right, one last jump here to 1604 on the northwest side of San Antonio. This bridge construction work will actually take place overnight from Wednesday, May 10th, all the way to Friday, May 12th. The work should wrap at 5 in the morning. We'll see westbound main lane full closures from I-10 to La Cantera Parkway. But plan your commute ahead of time. Scan this QR code. It takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page, and we have a full list of all the closures that are happening right now through the month of May. So plan your commute ahead of time. Thank you, Stephen. All right, we are here to talk about the Astros, but here's the thing. Yes, we know they're the reigning World Series champs, but the guy in the mound might also look familiar, and New Braunfels native, we're gonna explain in just a bit. There are a lot of diet plans out there, but not all of them work, especially if you're looking for heart-healthy options. Which plan might be better for you after the break?